oh my gosh, don't take this or you will uninstall. Just kidding. Well, not really. It depends on how much you take. Folks, members of the medical community such as myself spend our entire lives fighting misinformation. People are so confused about things, people make up their own narratives about things. This is not one of those cases. The general public, for the most part, seems to be pretty well educated on this particular topic. And of course, what we're talking about here today is acetaminophen and its effect on the liver and how it can be dangerous. Nevertheless, there is still much more education to be made because, as we'll see here soon, there is a lot of liver transplants that happen simply because of this one chemical. I'm Grant Harding. I'm a licensed pharmacist in three states, and I like to review medications so you guys can make better, more well-informed decisions. Today, we'll just be talking about the safety of acetaminophen. Acetaminophen is a weird little guy. A lot of people call it an NSAID, a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. It's actually not. It's its own weird little thing, and it has properties that are very similar to the NSAIDs, though. It can be used to lower a fever, and it's really good for treating muscle-related pain. It can also help with headaches as well, but headaches are kind of weird. It's Some people will get relief, some will not. One of the weird parts about acetaminophen is how many different dosage forms it comes in. I have a tablet here. It's an immediate release tablet, which is in this case 500 milligram, but it also comes in a 325 milligram immediately release tablet. Here, I'll move over so I can put some things on the screen. It comes in a 650 milligram extended release. It comes in liquid, and I actually have one of the new liquids here today, Pain Quill. This has alcohol in it. We'll talk about that. Don't worry. It comes as an injection, although you would never prescribe this. If any prescribers are watching this, don't do that. There's no reason. Why? Because it also comes in a suppository, and it's equally as effective. The injection is really expensive for no reason. The brand name I just showed you on there is Pain Quill for one of the liquids, but Tylenol is the one everybody thinks of. And our friends across the pond in Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry would call this paracetamol. I actually have some paracetamol, I think. Hey, I found it. One of the things I never really understood is in America, we would say the chemical is called acetaminophen and the brand name is called Tylenol. But apparently over in Europe, it's paracetamol for both. I don't know, that always confused me. Anyway, all these names I found out recently have to do with the chemical structure name of the molecule. There you can see how you can get paracetamol from that, uh, acetaminophen, and also Tylenol is found in those letters. This is a really good chemical. I love it. I use it for muscle pain myself but it does have some baggage. It is dangerous. In fact, so much so, if you look at the back of any of these packages I just showed you, it will say there's a limit of 4,000 milligram or four gram per day. And the reason being is because we don't want you to get too much of it because it's well documented. In fact, we know step by step how the toxicity even happens because it's so common. So much so that the second leading cause of a liver transplant is due to acetaminophen toxicity and half of those are unintentional. Another reason being is because there's lots of medications that contain acetaminophen and people don't realize it. For example, Norco contains hydrocodone and acetaminophen. Ultraset contains tramadol and acetaminophen. Percocet is oxycodone and acetaminophen. And if folks are taking these medications and they also add their own over-the-counter Tylenol on top of that, well, they could put themselves at risk for liver toxicity. So how much do you actually have to take to experience some of these toxic side effects? Well, about seven and a half grams all at once or 12 grams per day. Timing is important here. And once I explain how the toxicity happens, it'll make perfect sense. Additionally, folks who have pre-existing liver impairment may be at more of a risk for developing even more toxicity. Now about the alcohol, a lot of people are like, wait, how does this have alcohol in it? That's bad for your liver as well. Well, in that amount, it's actually not going to matter. In fact, taking some alcohol with acetaminophen has been shown to reduce the risk of liver toxicity. That does not mean it's a good idea because the risk reduction is very, very low. (laughs) Chronic alcohol use does put someone at a risk for liver damage, but it's kind of like you have two different mechanisms working at the same goal here, the goal being to ruin the liver. 
because this is so well documented, we actually know what happens as time goes on. In stage one, the first 30 minutes to 24 hours, you probably wouldn't notice anything. You could have some nausea, vomiting, diaphoresis, lethargy, or malaise. In fact, if they draw blood work, it's probably going to be fine. What's really weird about this, this is truly an example of something that gets better before it gets worse. Between 24 and 72 hours, the results of the lab work would be bad, but the patient might feel better, actually. Additionally, they could have some upper right quadrant pain. At this stage, you might also see some issues with blood clotting. Now at stage 3, 72 to 96 hours, the blood levels will be off the charts. People will become jaundiced, their skin will be yellow, or the sclera of their eyes. Confusion, hyperammonemia, muscle pain, heart arrhythmia. It could even cause kidney dysfunction as well. That'll make sense here in a minute. The fourth stage would be after 96 hours. If they make it that long, they would actually start to recover. Typically begins at day four and ends at day seven. So what the heck is going on here? Why does this happen? Well, whenever you take acetaminophen, it goes in your body and it's transformed in the liver to several different things. About 8% of the acetaminophen that you ingest is transformed into napki. Napki is bad and it's toxic and it'll scar your liver and it'll cause it to shut down. The liver first takes the acetaminophen and turns it into napki. And then that napki is turned into these inactive metabolites that just get excreted through the urine. But if you take a much larger dose, the process gets backed up. It's like a traffic jam, or I guess like a toll would be a more of an appropriate analogy. You got all these cars trying to come through the toll, and there's only one toll worker. If there's not so many cars, they can manage it. But if you're taking a huge dose and you put a whole bunch of cars through this one poor little toll worker, they're not going to be able to get everybody through. And pretty soon some people get disgruntled and they'll, I guess, just turn into napki. <laughs> No, they become violent and malicious, I guess, as you could say. They get so mad because they're sitting in traffic. I don't know. So once napki starts building up, it's bad news bears. But there's an antidote. Someone insert an anecdote pun right there, please. There's this thing called NAC, or N-acetylcysteine. And what this does is it provides chemicals that the liver needs to continue this transformation from napki into the inactive metabolites. NAC comes in and it's like you just got several more toll workers into this toll station and they're all handing out tickets and taking money and just slinging everybody through the tolls so quickly because now they have all this extra help. This is so well documented that we actually have a chart. Take a look at this. This is the Rumac Matthew monogram. I'll move it out of the way so you can see. And on the x-axis we have time. Time after ingestion. And on the y-axis you have the blood levels of acetaminophen. So you literally just look at the numbers, draw a lab, see what the acetaminophen level is, and relative to the time after ingestion, if the point is above this black line, then you have to give them NAC. Notice something here. The plot doesn't start until four hours after ingestion. Sometimes I've heard people ask, why don't we just sell NAC with acetaminophen? Well, it wouldn't do anything. The process hasn't begun, the knack would leave your system, and it wouldn't even help at all if you gave it before that four-hour mark. Did I call this a monogram? It's a nomogram. <laughs> if someone presents to like an emergency situation less than four hours after um, administering a too much of a dose of acetaminophen, there's still things we do, it's just not knack. Probably be activated charcoal at that point. What's cool about this antidote is it's Basically 100% effective if given within eight hours. I think that's really cool. So folks, I hope this cleared up some confusion for you. Perhaps if you were worried about taking acetaminophen, now you have enough information to make a better decision about acetaminophen therapy. Maybe you watch this and realize you've been taking too much for too long anyway, and you need to cut back some. That's good too. Stick around, I make all sorts of fun videos like this.